I want to talk a little bit about universal design for learning, and I'm going to start off with some background on how it's become so important for me. I've taught at many different levels, with many different focuses, and even in a few different countries, and throughout it all, there has been one common thread. Relationship. You know, I've always wanted what was the best for my students, and very often that was based on a gut feeling about students who were struggling or bored, and it was important for me that they all have what they need to succeed. The gut feelings and good intentions weren't enough. I needed some kind of structure. No matter how much we like to rely on our gut feelings as a teacher, I'm responsible for all of the students in my classroom and having that structure ensures that my work is equitable for my students and manageable for me. It helps to give form to my feelings. Now, it's not an accident that I use this image of a scaffold as my structure because I'm going to talk a little bit about universal design, which started in architecture. The idea behind universal design is this focus on the design of products, buildings, and environments so that they can be used by the widest possible range of users. A really good example of this in architecture has to do with design for people in wheelchairs. This picture shows an accommodation. It was added on after the building was built in response to the needs of people in wheelchairs. But what happens if you don't have a phone with you? Or what happens if the person who's supposed to be at the other end of the phone has gone to the bathroom or something? It's not an accommodation that leads to greater access. However, if from the get-go, we use the principles of universal design to design entryways that can be used by everybody. We're not only making it accessible to the person in a wheelchair, but it's accessible to everyone. So there are a variety of different extensions of this idea to education. You may have heard of things like active learning, inclusive pedagogical practices, universal design of instruction, or what we're talking about today, universal design for learning, UDL. In essence though, each of these are design approaches that consider the needs of users from the very beginning of the design process. They're based in equity and choice, flexibility and accessibility. As an educator, the importance of our work lies in creating that environment where our instructional methods and student needs are balanced with subject matter requirements. When we do that effectively, that's where the magic of relationship lies. Universal Design for Learning is a framework that can help to ensure our relationship is based in learning and opening access to that learning for all of our students.